Hey guys, and welcome to the Physique Development Podcast. Today on the podcast, we have a guest, Coach Charlotte. Snaps for, I can't snap with these nails, but (laughs) Coach Charlotte is here with us. Thank you very much for being my stand-in snapper. But today we're going to be talking about muscle building, the benefits of muscle building, mistakes that people make along the way, as well as talking about some different things from our personal experience going through muscle building. So something that's really cool and something that I absolutely love is I actually get to work with a good number of the coaches on staff at Physique Development, and Charlotte is one of them. So yes, we've worked indeed. together for two years. And two and a half. Two and a half. And it's been so incredible to watch her grow as an athlete. Of course, watch her grow as a coach, which she has definitely done. Watch her grow as an athlete, as someone who just loves to train. And I think it's also going to be really helpful as we get into this topic to talk a little bit about Charlotte's past and especially within struggles that she's had within building muscle and then being able to kind of push on over to the benefits of muscle building and some of these other topics we want to talk on. But first, Charlotte, say hey. Hello, everybody. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me, Sue. Of course. So do you want to go ahead and start off on just going through a building phase and what that looks like or fill people in on your past a little bit within uh, whether it's struggle building muscle or what all it's looked like for you as you have trained through the years? Yeah, absolutely. So as far as my personal background and experience within building muscle, As I feel many people can relate, my fitness journey did not initially begin as a muscle building journey. That was not my initial goal. My goal was really to pursue being smaller, and that was really the only thing that I really cared about and kind of prioritized within my journey. However, I eventually got to a place where I realized that was not actually the physique that I wanted to build. That was not chasing. That was not going to get me where I wanted to go. So I started to dabble with weightlifting and started to experiment with different programs and things of that nature that I found online. However, I quickly realized that, you know, after I completed my first eight week program, that that was not all that it was going to take me to reach my goal physique. So while I was doing things a little bit better as far as actually pursuing muscle building, you know, actually resistance training regularly, as opposed to just spending hours and hours on the treadmill doing body weight banded kickbacks, you know, on a mat next to the machines. Um, And while again, this kind of got my foot in the door of exercise, this was not what was going to help me build the physique that I really wanted. So like I said, I reached the end of a eight week program and realized, hmm, this isn't really where I want to be with things. So it took some, it took some time beyond that. And it helped me realize that, you know, this is a process that's going to take me longer. And eventually I just really fell in love with the process and fell in love with training, fell in love with building strength. And um, it just allowed me to develop an even better understanding of myself and what I am capable of outside of the gym. Because when I was, you know, pursuing being smaller, it was something that I think that that attitude carried over into my life more than I really realized. And I think that I can see that now when I look back. Um, But, you know, as I've kind of continued to progress, it's ultimately been something that has helped me tremendously grow as an individual and also a coach. Um, But anyway, that's a little bit on kind of my journey and how things have evolved. Um, And then I started working with Sue back in 2019. And pretty much since that, since then, we've been pushing the growth pretty hard and it's yeah. been a lot of fun. Um, gone through, you know, a couple of short cutting phases within that time frame, but through I think it's 132 weeks or something like <laughs> Lots that. Lots of check-ins. A lot of check-ins. Uh, I think within that, you know, we've spent pretty much the entire time building muscle. And I think that's been a, a huge component and something that I definitely want to speak on today. But that should hopefully give you at least a brief idea of kind of where I've began where I began and kind of how I got to where I am now. Yeah. And I love that you mentioned First, that your pursuit started off with being smaller, because I think a lot of people listening or watching this can relate to it. And I know for myself with starting my fitness journey and the episode that we did on my fitness journey, it was because I was extremely unhappy in the body that I was in. And it started off as I just want to look better. And whether that was for attention from other people or from, you know, the other gender or whatever, whatever whatever gender you want noticing you, that was something that I was having problems 
with just not loving myself. And especially with you talking about because you were chasing that small, that also pushed over to other aspects of your life that you didn't even realize. So I think that's extremely powerful to talk about, as well as you guys know, if you regularly listen to this podcast, we are not against you losing weight, getting leaner, doing a competition, chasing after a goal that is aesthetic. We're, we're all for that. But being able to recognize, especially with the way diet culture is and the narrative that is pushed for females specifically, navigating through that and then taking it the step of, oh, I want to build muscle. And I, I especially love that you went one path and you were like, oh, wait, this isn't how I want to look. So before we dive into things a little bit further here, I'd love to know for you, was it something that you realized, oh, it's, I'm not going to get there if I keep trying to be smaller? Or was it something that you felt like it wasn't maintainable to keep chasing after that or a little bit of a mixture of the two? I think it was definitely a mixture of the both where it certainly was not sustainable by any stretch of the imagination. Um, eating, you know, very, very low calories, doing extensive amounts of cardio on a regular basis, you know, none of those things are sustainable for long periods of time. Now, that's not to say that, you know, if you enjoy cardio and enjoy doing that, that you shouldn't do that, you know, for a large chunk of the week, if that's something that you really love. I mean, of course, you know, pursue that. However, it was something where I wasn't doing it out of a place of self-love. Um, and, you know, to your previous point about something where, you know, I realized that it wasn't going to get me where I wanted to go. Yes, I realized that, you know, my actions were not helping me with that. But I also realized that the headspace that I was existing, that I was living in kind of as I was going through that also wasn't going to get me where I wanted to go. Because like I said, you know, it was continuous, continuously point pushing me to be smaller. And it was something where it was limiting me in my relationships. It was limiting me in my quality of life. It was limiting me in my ability to show up in my job in the way that I wanted to. So it was something where I realized, you know, something has to change. And it certainly was not easy. Um, I ended up actually taking off a semester of college. And I believe I spoke on this a little bit in my coach's episode. And if not, then I'm sorry for speaking <laughs> on this. And I can definitely expand on this more in the future. Um, but it was something where I actually ended up taking a semester off of college to really kind of say, hey, whoa, I need to take a step back and really reevaluate what is important to me and what is going to help me go where I want to go in life. So like I said, it, it was a little bit of all of the above um, and realizing that, you know, the way that I was existing wasn't going to help me build the physique that I wanted to build, but it certainly was not going to help me build the life and help me become the person that I wanted to become either. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And if you guys haven't listened to our Coach's Spotlight episode, we'll have that linked in the description box and in the show notes. And after this episode, if you want to hear more from Char, Charlotte, let us know. We always have links in the description box or the show notes where you can suggest topics or ask questions, and we want to answer them. And Charlotte is in town. So if you are watching this on YouTube, she is in studio. Uh, so it is something that we can definitely get some other podcasts lined up. But I do want to dive into this and we can circle it around to your story because I think it will just be so helpful um, in being able to, you know, tie this all together as a whole. So when it comes to building muscle, why should people build muscle? Muscle building is something that I feel like people don't necessarily always realize the benefits for your actual human. Like the <laughs> we function. talk about the aesthetic benefits of building muscle and being able to, you know, shape your body in a way that you want to. Um, but we don't really talk about the actual physical benefits of building muscle and how it's going to benefit your frame, your health, your longevity, um, and many different factors, you know, within that. So as far as a couple of different benefits that we can discuss, the first couple that I want to talk about are a couple of health benefits that we can discuss as far as increased bone density that you will experience from resistance training. Um, you can also improve your overall blood glucose control and your insulin sensitivity. Um, you can also experience mental health benefits, such as improved mood from the endorphins that you can uh, get during your training sessions. Um, your ability to actually process uh, cognitively can improve, especially within older adults. Um, I think that we really focus on the immediate benefits of resistance training, but we also want to think about how something can benefit us for the long run and as we age. So being able to have those cognitive benefits, you know, working on your side as you're a young person, and then as you go through that aging process is only going to benefit you mentally and 
and physically. And we can also talk about, you know, the physical benefits of having more lean mass on your frame. And we did discuss, you know, should you be somebody who does want to pr uh, pursue fat loss and things of that nature? And of course, those are valiant goals to be able to work towards. However, having more lean mass on your frame can actually work with you towards your fat loss goals, because with having more lean mass on your frame, your overall basal metabolic rate or the number of calories that your body expends on a regular basis will be higher. So it will be easier to create a caloric deficit, drive that energy expenditure up and pursue those fat loss goals. So like we said, you know, it can have those aesthetic benefits, but the physical benefits are just never ending. And that's only a very, very small list of the benefits, but I don't want to go on too long about that. But hopefully that gives you a brief idea. If you're listening to this right now and you're like, dang, this sounds freaking great. I would love to be able to add muscle to my frame, but I need help doing it. Go ahead and look at the link in the description box or in the show notes, and we'd love to hop on a call with you and be the last coach that you'll ever need. I absolutely love that because there are so many functional benefits of weight training. And I think that in the space that we are, and again, I mentioned the diet culture that our country and world are a part of, it can be very hard to look at it of, oh, there's a lot of other benefits outside of just the way that you look. There are those physical benefits, those mental benefits, and it is something that, I mean, as a female, it is extremely empowering to become stronger, not only because you can do stuff yourself and you can just be able to do things that you previously weren't able to, which is a really cool feeling, whether it's opening a jar or picking something up or anything, it, it is very empowering. But it's also something when it comes to self-defense, I know I have just felt more safe because I feel like I could truthfully like defend myself if needed because I don't just feel fragile. I just don't. And it's a really great feeling to have. And that feeling of safety doesn't just come from that outward safety as if someone were to come at me, which don't do it because I just said I would come back. She will but, fight you. <laughs> but I have, feel like I have a lot more internal safety of just knowing my capabilities as a whole. Yes. And I think that's so huge. And, you know, th knowing your own capabilities and knowing what you are knowing, you know, that there is more that is available to you. Because like I said, you know, when, when I was pursuing, you know, being smaller endlessly, it was something where I felt like I was limited. Um, and when, as I started to pursue strength and building muscle, it was something where learning to take up space in and out of the gym has been, you know, one of the most transformative experiences of my entire life. And if I look back to, you know, who I was prior to weight training and who I am now, so much of my overall personal development has come from not necessarily directly from strength training, but from that overall confidence, from the ability to take up space and to feel good taking up space and to own that. Because again, when you're continuously pushing yourself to be smaller, it's something where you feel like you can't take up space in conversation and in room and in, you know, asking for what you want in a job or in a relationship conversation or something like that. And when you start to be able to, you know, see your own capabilities within the strength training setting, it becomes so much, I don't want to say easier because those things are never necessarily easy, but it becomes much more doable. Uh, yeah, it becomes much more doable and you can really see, you know, yourself actually achieving these things. You don't see those self-limiting beliefs start to fade away. And again, it's it's not something that happens overnight. I talk about, you know, it's the road less traveled when you are so used to thinking about something one way in your brain and you're pursuing a different path. I mean, look, think of it like you're walking down a road and a path in the forest that's never been traveled down before. You're going to have to push some brush to the side. You might trip over a root. You might stumble along the way. But, you know, when you get to that clearing, when you get to the end of that path, you are going to feel so much more fulfilled and empowered because you took that, you know, less traveled road, if that makes sense. And I think that's a really great, I love that analogy in general. But um, I think being able to look at it through that lens is so, so, so valuable and taking up space owning it and being able to trust yourself. Yeah. And actually, Charlotte had shared a quote, and you can tell me who it was if you know who posted the quote, but I saved it because I loved it. And it was, women need iron, not the vitamin, the barbell. We are trained by the world around us to have fucked up ideas about our bodies. Iron unfucks them. We are taught that the only good direction for the scale to go is down and to agonize ritualistically when it goes up. 
iron teaches us the power of gaining weight for strength and gives us another weight to care about the weight that we are lifting. And when Charlotte first posted that, I truthfully got cold chills when I read I have it. Chills right now. <laughs> I genuinely I, have chills. I do too. That's why I mentioned it. I have it again because it was something that when I talk about like fitness saved my life or li- lifting saved my life, it wasn't that I was at risk of dying per se. I was at risk of living an extremely unfulfilling life. And by lifting and by building strength and muscle, I that was my vehicle to capability. It was everything in the gym correlated or translated to something else in my life. When I look at when I first started seriously training, not just exercising or being in the gym, when I first started seriously training when I was in college, that's when all the mindset shifts started to change. That's when all of the growth started to happen in my body and in my mind. And that's when I realized I could do so much more. Because if I can pick up this 50 pound dumbbell and lift it above my head, then why can't I stand up for myself? in this situation? Why can't I interject in this situation? Why don't I have a seat at the table? And I started to break down exactly what you said, those self-limiting beliefs that I was like, oh my gosh, it was like this huge bomb went off and everything that I believed about myself or about my capabilities just was bottomed out. And I had to build up those new beliefs and it was so empowering, so special. And I feel like to this day, it's still something that gives me that strength and gives me that belief. And when I go in and train, yes, it's therapeutic for me just to go in there, put my head down. But even The other day, we filmed a session, and it's probably already live on YouTube, so we'll have it linked below, of a train with me session. And we did it with no music because we didn't want the video to get copyrighted on YouTube. And I'm in there training with absolutely no music, just dead silent and feeling so powerful and just being able to pick it up and put it down and realize if I can keep doing that, if I can keep training my mind, training my body, I can get better. And that's such a cool feeling to have, a cool realization to reach. And it's something that with the rest of this podcast, we want to talk about, you know, why you should do that as well. <laughs> so we will, we got off on a little bit of a tangent, but I think it was a really good tangent to get yes, off on. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you included that quote. It was something that, you know, even you reading that like brings me back to the very first moment I read that. And I was like, wow, like it truly is such a difference maker. And it, like you said, it just changes so many, so many different things and makes you believe so much more about yourself. But anyway, we'll, yeah, <laughs> we'll stop get... our little tangent here. <laughs> but like I said, I appreciate you sharing yeah. that. I think that a lot of people will get a lot out of that. So now that we've heard our, our personal experience of how much <laughs> we love training and the benefits of training, you're probably thinking, well, why doesn't everyone want to build muscle? So why do people struggle with building muscle, Charlotte? Yes. Building muscle is, you know, it's a great idea and there's a lot of wonderful benefits like we've talked about, but it's it's not, it's not easy. It's not a walk in the park. And I mean, no fitness school is necessarily easy. Um, but I think that people often underestimate just how difficult muscle building can really be and just how long it can take. And I think that's really kind of the main thing, not the main thing, but a really big piece of why people kind of struggle within it is they kind of rush it or they expect that they're going to be able to see all this growth or put on all of this lean mass in a very, very short period of time. And that simply is not the case. I mentioned that, you know, when I first started kind of getting into resistance training, I did an eight-week kind of beginner-focused program, which, again, was really great in getting my foot in the door. But by the time I got to the end of eight weeks, I really didn't see that much progress. Yes, I had seen some muscle growth because I was a beginner and, you know, getting into training and you're going to see some really great progress within that time frame. But you have to give yourself time. And if you limit yourself on, oh, I'm only going to be in a building phase for 12 weeks or, oh, I'm only going to, you know, work on this for a very short period of time, you are cutting yourself short. And I feel like that is so often what holds people back. And kind of along that vein is, you know, going through muscle building phases can come with some days or maybe you are a little bit more uncomfortable comfortable. Um, You might be a little bit more full from having to eat, you know, a little bit more food. Um, You may feel, you know, a little bit more full just from having more muscle on your frame, feeling a little bit heavier. And sometimes for some people that can be challenging mentally. And the initial move that people will make in that moment is, oh, you know, I need to start pursuing fat loss or, oh, it's time to jump back into a calorie deficit. And again, really cut themselves short on that time to continue to pursue muscle building. And then again, you're not giving yourself the, you know, caloric allotment that you're going to actually need. So you're just going to end up kind of getting to the end of that fat loss phase and realizing, oh, 
I don't actually have that much more muscle on my frame mm-hmm. because you didn't give yourself the adequate time to build that muscle. So I think that time is a really, really big one. And really, again, giving yourself adequate time, adequate patience, and not jumping into a dieting phase really quickly is going to be a really, really huge one. Um, another really big piece within that is going to be struggling with what you're doing in the gym or not being efficient with what you're doing in the gym or not really being effective with what you're doing in the gym. And this can look like you know multiple different factors, whether it be doing too much volume volume, not executing movements properly, not setting up movements well. And if you struggle with that, well, we got you. Their YouTube channel is full of exercise execution videos. So you can make sure that you know exactly what you're doing for those exercises to get the most bang for your buck. Absolutely. And you'll be in a much better position to <laughs> build muscle after you watch those videos. Um, and then something else within that is, you know, just not being intentional with what you're doing in the gym. Sometimes people will go in the gym and just, you know, swing the muscle around or swing the weight around and be like, yeah, yeah, I lifted today. But did you actually lift with intention? Did you actually cur- contract the muscle fibers that you were trying to contract? Did you actually create tension where you wanted to create tension or were you just swinging their weight around in the air? I see that all too often in my public gym. And sometimes I just want to say, just need a little more intention and you'll get where you want to go. Um, but, you know, it's, it's something that I think that a lot of people overlook. Um, and then another component that will come with that is not recovering well. And this could potentially bleed into what I had mentioned about, you know, potentially doing a little bit too much volume within your training session. But if you're not giving yourself time to recover and if you're just doing more, if you're on your feet all day long, if you're not sleeping well enough, if you're not giving your body time to actually recover and rest, you are not going to see the progression that you want. Because it's not just a question of, can I do more? Can I push myself harder? Can I do another set to failure? Can I do more, more, more? That's not going to facilitate the changes that you want to see. You can only progress from that which you can actually recover from. And if you're not prioritizing recovery, you're not going to be able to progress. And that bleeds into not managing your stress. Um, But those are a couple of just main really big pillars that I see within people who start to work with me, you know, as new clients um, and things that we'll work on, you know, within our first couple of months of, you know, really pursuing muscle building from an appropriate perspective. Yeah. And with that, it's something that we definitely do not try to say, oh, it's something of just realize you need time and it'll be all okay. As we've talked about, women are programmed to want to see the scale go down. And still to this day, I and and Charlotte, I'm sure is the same, because I'm in the fitness world and because there's so many people reminding everyone like, hey, this takes time, this is what it does, and we've spent so much time learning and understanding it, to us at this point, it seems like, oh yeah, that's fine if the scale changes, it's fine if this happens, it's fine if this happens. I understand the process, but I also understand that not enough people understand the process. And so if you're listening to this and you're like, they don't get how hard it is, we do. And I promise you it's okay that it feels hard because it is a mind fuck as a female to see the scale go up, especially in such a scale-centric world. So it is something that you do need to take a look up if the scale is serving you. And if you think, hey, well, if I don't have this scale in place, how do I track my progress? There's many other features and things that you can use to track your progress. And we will get to that in a little bit here. But it is something that you have to to recognize if the scale is a valuable tool to use in your toolbox. I have had to take the scale away from many clients and take time off from the scale or take more time on the scale for a lot of clients. It is going to depend on the situation for where that person's relationship is with the scale. But the scale is only measuring your weight in relation to the gravity you have to this earth, and it is a square on the ground in your bathroom. No one walks walking around in your life knows what your scale weight is unless you tell them. And so what you need to be able to work on is what that worth is outside of the scale. Because it's also something that we cling to this number of what it is. So let's say, for example, you get on the scale and in the morning, it's 130 pounds. I can promise you throughout the day, you're not 130 pounds because you're consuming food, taking in different things, all of this. But if someone asks you your weight, it's, oh, I'm 130 pounds 
pounds or I want everyone to know I'm this weight, where I have been the same weight about 20 different times in my life and looked completely different each and every time. Again, not saying it's easy to come to that conclusion, but it is something that having a coach can definitely help within that. And just being able to have someone guide you and cut out the noise that's around you within the world, have someone that understands it and to help you move that needle. But it is something that, again, we understand that it's not as easy as just be okay with the scale going up. Be okay with your clothes being tight. That's hard too, whether it's because you just bought clothes and now they don't fit anymore or it's something of your clothes just don't fit in the way that you're used to. I'll I'll say it, and I know that anyone who has muscle that is a female listening to this, clothes aren't meant to fit women with muscles. Now they are getting better and better at it, Mm -hmm. but it is meant for a different frame. And it's very hard to come to the conclusion that you need to be able to have your clothes fit you instead of you fit your clothes. So there's a lot of complexities on this. And again, we're not saying it's easy. We're not saying here, we've told you the benefits. We told you it works. Now just do it. Just help hopefully supplying more information to you so that it does become a little bit easier as you start to take that step in the right direction. And towards Charlotte mentioning time, time and time again, as she should, because it does take time, that's the other hard thing. Because you can do a 12-week or an 8-week diet and see incredible results and really see it come to fruition. But you can do an 8- or a 12-week build and that not be the case. And oftentimes when it comes to exactly what you're talking about of as soon as someone feels uncomfortable, they switch mindsets of, oh, I need to go into a diet phase. I personally have a belief that that is due to your own self-belief or your self-limiting belief that you do not believe you're capable of truly changing your body in that way. And so you immediately think, I just need to be smaller. And so it is something that is very helpful to self-audit and self-reflect and wonder why you feel anytime you start to feel uncomfortable one direction, you feel like you need to go the other. Because I can tell you, just like resistance training, resistance in the real world And in any of these mental conversations you're having is only going to make you stronger. So if you feel resistance as you are trying to build muscle, you feel that resistance as your clothes aren't fitting, as you're feeling full and it's hard, know that that's preparing you and helping you be stronger just like resistance is within the gym. 110%. And this bleeds into what we had, you know, gone off on our little tangent up there about, about, you know, pushing through the resistance in your brain and those things being able to lead you to believing you are com- you are capable of more beyond the gym because even if you, because you know let's say again you have that sense of capability to lift that fifty pound dumbbell and to feel strong. If you feel okay, you know, with those clothes fitting a little bit differently, if you begin to feel more comfortable in your skin in that headspace, again, that can only lead to more confidence in other settings beyond that. And I think that what you spoke about with things like clothing are really, really important. And I um, I think that a really important thing to think about is, you know, the body that you desire may not necessarily fit into the clothing that you have now. And that's a really important thing to kind of get through your head. And that's something that I know that I've certainly struggled with before. Um, And it's something where, you know, being able to kind of giving myself the permission to step past that and kind of say, yes, you know, I do feel this way. And yes, it is uncomfortable, but the body that I desire does not fit into these clothes that I have right now. And that is okay. I can be a larger size. I'm, you know, just to be totally honest with everybody, I'm the heaviest I've ever been in my entire life right now. And that doesn't necessarily matter, but I feel very okay with it. And it's been so empowering to be in this, be where I am right now in my journey and to feel okay with it. But it did not It did not happen overnight. I have definitely had moments in my past where I have jumped into a dieting phase too quickly. And it's something where I've only learned so much from those experiences. And I don't want people to make those same mistakes. And of course, you know, we learn from those things for sure. Um, But again, like Sue was saying, where you experience resistance, you also experience growth within the gym and within life. So really being able to keep that front of mind. Obviously, it's so much easier said than done. Um, but again, being able to keep it that headspace and keep that, you know, again, at the top of mind is going to be huge. And something else that I think is important as well is, you know, the goal is always to, the goal is always to love ourselves. The goal is always to feel good within our skin. And that's always what we want to work towards. However, it's, 
you're not necessarily going to wake up every single morning and feel amazing. I don't think that anybody on this earth wakes up every single morning and feels absolutely amazing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that is that you have permission in that moment to be really mean to yourself and be really critical. So in those moments, it can be really helpful to focus more on body neutrality and being more neutral in your body and accepting kind of how, how you are now, not necessarily loving where you are now. It doesn't, not, doesn't necessarily have to bleed into, you know, love and all of those things immediately, but respecting where you are and understanding that it is serving a purpose and getting you where you want to be. So that's something that I know has been tremendously helpful for me as I've kind of gone through, again, it being hard because it is hard. And I can say, you know, just take the time and do that. But like I said, I've struggled with taking the time myself and I've made that mistake previously. Um, but, you know, again, we always learn from those experiences. And like I said, that that neutrality in those moments can be life-changing and so empowering and, again, just get you in a more healthier headspace as opposed to being very negative and critical. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of us women, I don't want to make a large generalization, but we want to grow our booty. So you want to grow your booty, but you think that your clothes don't need to grow with you. So I always remind myself of that, of, hey, if I want this, then I might need to go up in a size of shorts. But again, no one's walking around checking your tags on your clothing. And if they are, you might want to reconsider who you're spending time I around. I don't want to spend time with them. Because I don't think that would ever be normal. No. But <laughs> no one's going around checking the size of your clothing. And through my past improvement season, so before I started this prep that I'm in right now, there was a point that I shared and none of my shorts were really fitting me. And it's because I was growing that booty. And trust me, I did. Mm -hmm. And it was something that I had posted on my story. These clothes don't fit me. I'm going to order the next size up and it's going to be okay. And I remember a lot of women messaging me and just being like, well, how do you deal with ordering the next size up? And honestly, it was hard for me to come to the conclusion to order that next size, but it was something that I didn't feel like I was squeezing my body into clothes that were uncomfortable and I'm all about comfort. I was able to wear clothes that flattered my body more and giving me the space to be comfortable within the body that I was in because it was something where I understood it was a means to an end. And even if it wasn't, it was something that I felt very uncomfortable because my clothes were too tight. They were squeezing me in different places and I didn't love the way I looked. And that made me feel even bigger because it was squeezing on everything and it just it wasn't a good feeling or look. And as soon as I got that bigger size, I was like, oh, these feel a lot more comfortable. I look a lot better and I'm able to move in that direction. And it's also something where it's just worth stating, even if we all know it, clothing sizing just like isn't universal no. ever. <laughs> I have brands that I am a small in. I have other brands that I am a large in. It just, it really doesn't matter. What matters is if they fit you and you like how they fit you. And I've also seen so many side-by-sides of girls wearing the exact same outfit, but like the wrong size for them and how much it alters their physique. But in your mind, you're thinking, oh, I'm this size or I want to be this size. I have to hold on to this size of clothing. But outwardly, you don't look as good as if you were just to move up that next size in clothing. So I, I'm, I'm glad that we're talking about this because this is a part that's often overlooked when it comes to women building muscle or, I mean, especially if men are talking on it, not that they're not allowed to talk on it or give advice or anything like that, but it is something, the mental psyche that we all go through, the experience that we have with clothing is very unique and society's perception or desire for us to look or be a certain way is very difficult. So We've now talked about not only the benefits of resistance training, our personal experience with it, and how capable it's allowed us to feel and how much women truly do need the iron. We talked about why people struggle within building muscle, not only within their clothing, but different things within the gym. And Charlotte made a ton of really phenomenal points. And then I also alluded to why a coach can be extremely helpful within this. So I think it's going to be helpful for Charlotte to touch on how having a coach has helped her as 
as well as some other points that have been helpful for her own clients. Hey guys, if you're listening to this and you've been in the gym for a couple of years, but you're still struggling to see the growth that you're really wanting to see within your physique, I would absolutely love to have the chance to hop on a call with you and guide you through your journey. You can click the link in the description and we will get things rolling. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is so important. And I, like we've talked about, you know, Sue and I have been working together for two and a half years. We've been through many, many phases together. And some of the most important and like most crucial components is for starters, it just takes a lot of the guesswork off of my own plate. I put so much time and effort and intentionality into my clients every single day. So that the fact that I don't have to think about my training and my macros and things of that nature, it makes it so much easier to then just get into the gym and put my meals together and just execute and know that I'm going in the direction that I need to go. It takes the guesswork out of my brain. I'm not thinking about it. I'm just executing. And I know Sue has spoken about this within her prep about the importance of that on previous podcasts. But I think that having that within a building phase is mm-hmm. just as important, if not even more important. Um, so being able to have that is huge. I think it's we we obviously just spoke about you know how it can be very difficult to go through the building process and have clothes fit differently, have the scale go up, feel a little bit you know different within your physique. And when you're going through that process on your own, it can be very easy to just think, okay, I'm doing something wrong or it's time to throw in the towel or I need to change my path. Um, When in reality, those are the moments where we grow the most and those are actually a sign that you are accomplishing your goal. If your clothes are fitting a little bit differently, if the scale is going up, if you are feeling a little bit different within your physique and your goal is to build muscle, all of these are signs that you are accomplishing your goal. But because of, again, the, the cultural and societal, you know, diet culture and pressures and things that we experience, and you know, previous experiences, we can experience those things and think, oh my gosh, like I'm doing something wrong. I need to go in a different direction. When in reality, it's just like I said, it's that road that's less traveled. You've never experienced that. It's gonna, you're gonna experience some resistance. You're gonna have to push through it. And being able to have somebody to you know, help you keep that big picture in mind, I know has been so helpful for me. I know there's been moments where, you know, a couple of years ago I was going on a trip and I was like, you know, I'd love to go into a dieting phase for this trip. And while, you know, that can absolutely, you know, time up in certain phases of your life, where I was within a growing phase, that wasn't going to be advantageous for me. So Sue was able to say, hey, this is not a time where we want to step into a dieting phase. I think it's going to be more advantageous for us to continue to pursue this growth for a longer period of time and keep you know, keep me focused on the goal because again, I was getting in my own head and kind of second guessing myself. And because I was able to keep pushing, because I was able to keep going in the direction, I was able to see so much better progress and it made such a difference for me at the end of the day. So I know, again, that's, it's been absolutely, you know, invaluable having that guidance going through this process. And again, just having somebody to help you keep that bird's eye view, because when you're, you know, in the trenches of your own life and going through it on a day-to-day basis, it can be a little bit, you 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 don't necessarily always see it um and you know progression within muscle building phases can sometimes be not necessarily like not as noticeable, but again, within a fat loss phase, you know, within an eight week period, you can see some really, really crazy changes within a uh, muscle building phase, maybe a little bit more difficult to see those changes again, because you may all have a little bit more body fat on your body as well. Again, nothing abnormal or wrong about that. It can just make it a little bit more difficult to potentially gauge that, especially if you're not experienced in looking at those changes within your own physique. So having somebody to, again, see those changes, point them out to you, say, hey, we're building this muscle, you're seeing it, we're seeing it where we want to see it, can be so, so, so helpful. So I think that's a couple of a couple of reasons yeah. been very benefit, beneficial for me. I don't know if you have any other thoughts. Yeah, well, it's also just as we've talked about, there's so many layers to how women view their bodies and how women see themselves and how anyone sees themselves. We talked about it in a few earlier podcasts. So we had an instant gratification podcast, which ties in with like dieting of you can have instant gratification and dieting because like you can see the scale go down pretty consistently. And that's gratifying to see like a new line each day or a new like split or whatever it may be. Clothes fitting differently. You can see it so much quicker and that's so gratifying. Whereas within muscle building, like you have to have that mindset of like we talked about in the delayed gratification podcast of, okay, I'm not getting exactly what I'm wanting this second, but I need to know that if I keep working hard, it's going to happen for me. And even if it doesn't happen for me because life happens, I know that I spent each day working towards what I needed to to feel my best. And that's point blank what it's about is you need to be able to show up and 
be able to hit your head on that pillow each night and know that you showed up for yourself. You kept promises to yourself and you were able to do something that you weren't able to do previously. And that's an addicting feeling to know that I showed up for myself again. You know, it's not an addicting feeling to live a very unfulfilling life and bounce back and forth between never knowing what's going on. And what Charlotte is talking about of that bird's eye view or just someone who is objective instead of subjective, we, again, are in our own heads all of the time. And we have these perceptions, these views of our bodies. I sometimes still view my body as who I was five, six, seven years ago. Sometimes I look in the mirror and I'm still that girl. And that's obviously not true, but your mind can play tricks on you and you have to be able to either be so brutally honest with yourself and so unbiased, which is extremely difficult to do. And especially if you're in a place where you've tried muscle building phases and felt like you've bounced between it, not to say, oh, you're not strong enough, you need someone to help you, but it's just, it's okay to need help and to need guidance. And especially from someone who knows what they're doing, has been down that path and can help, like I said, cut out that noise. So when you're starting to spiral of, oh my gosh, all I've done is add fat or, oh my goodness, I'm looking this certain way and we're not seeing progress, you have that person to reel you in and look at those variables. And that other part of having a coach is that check-in document. So I had a client today that I was talking with and she said, I love this check-in document because even before I get your response, I feel like I'm so much more reflective and so much more in tune with my body. Not only am I seeing all the variables laid out in front of me, I am also understanding how they impact one another. I'm able to see my effort that I went in with the week, reflect back on it, and see what I need to do. It's so easy to point the finger at anything else, but being able to look inward, being able to be reflective, using that check-in document, and then having that objectivity from that coach can be I mean, and invaluable. It's imperative for your success, especially if you have a million other things going on. We all leave lead crazy lives. Mm -hmm. You can't expect yourself to be an expert at everything and to do everything perfectly as much as my brain would like to tell me that that is yeah. possible. It is not. I keep finding out that mm -hmm. I just can't do everything and I have to be okay with letting up some control to see the result that I want to see. Absolutely. And I think that's such a great point that you do have to sometimes be okay with letting up a little bit of that control and also understanding that sometimes things may not necessarily feel or look exactly how you think they're going Love to feel that. and yep. look. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong. So again, people sometimes begin pursuing muscle building goals and are like, okay, I'm just going to get jacked. I'm going to feel super strong and all of these things. And while again, that's very much definitely the case, again, going through a muscle building phase, you likely will put on a little bit of body fat alongside that. And sometimes people can think, Think, oh my gosh, I'm doing something wrong, but that very much is not the case. So being able to understand that even if you think that something may, you know, not necessarily be correct, that very well could just be your perception and it may in fact be the actual correct way of doing things. However, you know, you're not supposed to know those things. You have a career and you do different things that are in a very, very different path. So being able to have somebody who's able to say, hey, this is exactly how things are supposed to be um, allows you to learn, allows you to understand how the process works, and again, allows you to take more control over your actual journey because you really understand kind of what's happening internally. So I think that's huge. And um, again, no one no one can do it alone. I, we've, we, yeah. we speak often at Physique Development about how, you know, if you want to go, if you want to go far, you go alone. If you want to go, or you, you want to go, go fast, fast. <laughs> you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. And I think this is so true within, you know, a fitness journey as well. And I mean, it's not a Necessarily true that if you go alone, you'll go fast. I think that's very much not necessarily the case, <laughs> but being able to actually go far together with somebody is, it's again, I, I mean, I could speak, I know yeah. it's been tremendously helpful. And I mean, she's not getting rid of me. Anytime <laughs> soon. Well, I feel the same way about my coach, also known as my husband. <laughs> exactly. But I, it's true. Like I would not see the progress that I have without him because I would be too in my head. Even though I am the professional in this, I I can very easily cast myself to the side. I can very easily not be objective for myself. And just like Charlotte said that you hire other professionals, I don't know how to be an accountant. So I pay someone else to do what I can't do or tell me what to do to make sure I get it right instead of me trying at it forever because I could sit and try to do my own taxes 
that would probably not end as well as me just asking someone to quiet the noise and tell me what the next step is in front of me. So I think that this was so extremely helpful to talk about, and especially in regards to females, of just being able, I feel like females, now people have like really made me second guess using the word females. I feel like it's like disrespectful. So I apologize, women, if that's, I I don't know. You tell me, but women <laughs> within this, of it being something that we get all of the people on staff that are women on physique development, which, by the way, makes up more than the men, mm-hmm. uh, we get it and we understand and we've been through a lot of what you've been through and we want to be able to help you. So if you have other questions about muscle building, if you have other questions for Charlotte, then please, I do urge you to go ahead and go in the show notes, go in the description box, go to the Google links and ask those questions because we want to be able to help you. And if you're listening to this and you feel, oh my gosh, Charlotte, I have the same story, can you help me? The answer is yes, she can. Absolutely. So if you want to work with Charlotte, we'll also have her inquiry link in the show notes and description box so you can get on a call and be able to see if you guys are a good match or a good match for someone else on the physique development team, whether you're a mom, which we love working with moms. We have multiple moms on staff. Perinatal certified. Yes, and Charlotte is now per- Not a mom. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte is perinatal certified. I'm perinatal certified. Katie's perinatal certified. We're all, okay, we're not all. I got Oprah carried away. But we are all certified in multiple different specialties to make sure that we can help you along the way. And the reason that we use the hash or not the hashtag, but the tagline of like the last coach you'll ever need is we are all extremely passionate about education and making sure that people don't feel the same way that we felt along the way and that we're able to quiet that noise and teach you about how to be in a body and function in a way that you love and can be empowered with. And hopefully you can feel the passion in both Charlotte and I's voices throughout this of we're extremely passionate about what the gym, what fitness, what health and wellness has brought into our life, not only physically because it brought each other into our life, but also (laughs) just what it's brought into our mentalities, the growth I've seen in Charlotte as a person, not only her muscle growth, which has been kick-ass, but the growth I've seen in Charlotte as a person from 2019 to now is night and day. It's not even the same person at all. And it's so freaking cool to see her translate everything over to her life and push to be a better person, push to learn more, push to just become more. And it started with picking up some freaking iron. It's so true. And I mean, I appreciate that. And it's so funny. I think like, you know, my life is so different because I made one decision two and a half years ago. But anyway, I think that it's also something where, you know, I didn't realize like how good I could really feel also. And this isn't necessarily like directly related to what Sue was just saying, but especially with regards to, you know, growth and pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. I didn't realize like how bad I felt in the headspace that I was in. So when I finally pushed myself to grow and pushed myself to say like, wow, maybe I can do that. My overall headspace changed so much. And, you know, Sue said like, again, tremendous growth as a human being. I can very much agree with that. (laughs) Um, It's kind of insane. But it it was something where, again, I didn't realize where I was and what I was really capable of. And I remember very vividly filling out the onboarding document and wanting to and typing out, like, I want to show myself what I'm capable of. And this process has only really has facilitated that in every single way. And I there's, I want that so much for every everybody. And of course, I understand that not necessarily everybody, you know, wants to be, you know, super jacked and have a ton of muscle and those things. And I completely understand that. But my goal is to potentially open your mind and open your perspective to something that potentially does include those things if maybe you weren't necessarily prioritizing that before. Because like I said, you don't necessarily realize like how good you could feel if you prioritize that and if you put yourself first in that way. And it, that was really what it took for me. And it took, of course, you know, having an amazing coach to help me through that Thank process you. as well. But it was something where, again, I, I, it wouldn't have happened had I not push through that resistance as we've kind of, you know, spoken yeah. on multiple times already. Yeah, and even pushing through the resistance of reaching out and asking mm-hmm. for help because Charlotte was already coaching people in person and had, a, I mean, was killing it and getting her things done. And she had to push out of that comfort zone of instead of feeling like, well, people are going to think I'm not good at what I do because I have to hire someone else or I have to ask for help. It's only helped her 
more. And same for myself. The more I've asked for help, the more I've admitted that I don't know everything, the more I have just reached for the people around me, the better I have become. And that is something really cool to be able to have within physique development as a whole, but also just to be able to have within all of the clients that we do have on physique development, because we do have on our Slack, which love you Slack, if you're listening to this, sponsor me. <laughs> um, I don't know what you would sponsor, Does but sponsor I love you. Slack sponsor I people? just love you. I don't know. <laughs> I'd love to know. Uh, um, but we have a channel on Slack that's like Team PD Wins, and we just share these super cool things from our clients that they share. And even each time. And I always urge people, I'm like, keep sharing them because this is why we do what we do. Because these messages, this makes it all worth it. Any headache that you would have from owning a business or working at a job or the frustration, whatever it may be, it's all worth it because of these little snippets from these people having these moments like Charlotte's talked about for herself or these moments of realization of, I feel better than I ever knew possible, or I'm stronger than I ever knew possible. Alex sent me one the other day of I'm buying clothes I never thought I would be able to wear or feel comfortable wearing, all these different things, it's incredible. And that's why we do what we do and why we preach what we preach is because we love this and we're passionate about it and we want that for as many people as possible. So to the freaking moon, thank you guys so much for joining us on this episode and we'll catch you in the next one.